Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm hiking quite a ways in to see a friend through the jungle who's getting ready to switch out his lead, ads, lead acid battery uh, on his solar system for lithium iron phosphate. Huh. Stop here and catch my breath. It's quite a hike back in here. I'm gonna go film this and uh, help him a little bit. And in the meantime, we have a category three hurricane, Calvin, on our way, making a beeline for the big island right here. Uh, it's supposed to bust up and not be a hurricane, but it's been unpredictable so far. And as we all know, it's that time of year and hurricanes can be unpredictable. So, <clears throat> going to be doing a little preparation for that event coming up in the next few days. They're saying it'll probably be a significant uh, rain event for us come about Tuesday. So, uh, stop here in the shade. It's a long hike back here. Okay, so that's that's what's on the agenda. I'm going to help my friend get his uh, lithium iron phosphate up and running. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna head home, start preparing for, uh, yeah, Hurricane Calvin. We'll see what that does. All right, I'm gonna start huffing and puffing a little bit faster so I can get there. Got a lot to do today. All right, guys, I made it back to my friend's place. It was quite a hike. I've caught my breath, and here's what we're gonna do today. A lot of you are going to recognize this battery. This is the Power Queen 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Currently, his system is running just off of uh, this one lead acid battery right here. And we're going to disconnect that. And we're going to drop this in here. And then he will be running on lithium iron phosphate. He has quite a system built and he's ready to go into lithium. He's got plenty of solar, 2,100 watts coming in. And he's got this right here is the uh, Victron Energy Smart Solar Charge Controller, MPPT150-100. So that's 150 volt, 100 amp uh, capability. So it's going to easily drive this battery here, the Power Queen. And yeah, he's excited. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun little project today. So that's what it's going to do right there. So here's the outside of the combiner box and it all looked good until we opened it, which is built nicely. But look what we saw inside. We stirred up a, a nest of ants that we're calling the bottom of that combiner box home. And there they're going crazy. So uh, uh, that's one of the things out here we have to do check for periodically. Um, and you can see why. That's not good. So we wanna get those cleaned out. And then we will uh, talk about this some more. Yeah, they're getting busy, aren't they? So right here is where his uh, 2100 watts of panels are coming in. You got two uh, 350 watt panels tied in parallel here, two here, and two here in a pyramid formation. And then he's got it encased all the way up to the panels in some very heavy uh, conduit like material. And those all come in to this combiner box, which is still got some ants issue, but he's going to uh, be dealing with that as soon as we're done filming. Uh, and here we go. So they come into these uh, breakers or fuses right here. And then th this uh, is some lightning protection or surge protection. And then you've got the isolator cut off, I mean the uh, solar panel isolator right there. So we can flip those panels off, which we will do before we get to turning any kind of wrenches. And Give you just a close-up of everything going on in there. I know it's a busy screen with those ants, but 
this is something we have to deal with periodically out here, and he will uh, make all of those disappear here shortly. But it's a very nice installation for the panels with this combiner box. And this is the eco-worthy PV combiner box for those of you that are interested. And they got some heavy duty uh, two gauge cables here. And I'll show you how those run. They, they run all the way down here. And then we come up and they run all the way over to that charge controller. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here they are coming right into the, the Victron. And I never knew personally that you could stick two gauge into a Victron, but this has a very, very large uh, receptacles on this particular charge controller. And you can see that they fit right in there. No problem whatsoever. And there it is. You can see that little 12 volt battery is obviously full. It only takes a moment to get that thing full. And then right here, this comes down to a, a cutoff switch here. And then further on down, it's got it tied into the battery, which is going to be replaced. And from that battery, comes over here and that ties into uh, the Samlex power. And this is a 2200 watt, 12 volt DC, pure sine wave inverter. And this will stay in place because it works very well for him. So we will disconnect that as well. And then we're gonna put, of course, the power queen. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shut those solar panels off here with this uh, isolator switch. He is no longer charging. Okay, now he's going to go ahead and shut the power from the charge controller off to the batteries. And we can see that the light on the Victron is now off. And when we tie the power queen in, we'll reverse these steps. Always want to make sure, and I've said this many times, is disconnect the solar panels first, then the battery, and then when you tie up the new battery, reverse the order. You just want to give this battery power before you open up the, the solar panels. So we're good to go now. We can start turning wrenches, break this down. This is not going to take very long. Very nice. All right. He's disconnecting his battery here. It's going to be real simple. Like we like to say sometimes, these lithium iron phosphate batteries are just kind of a drop-in replacement for lead acid, and that's what we're doing today. We're pulling the lead acid out and dropping the lithium iron phosphate in. So I'll let him finish disconnecting that, and then we're going to tie up that power queen. So he's getting the rest of his connections uh, ready to tidy up. And he's now filing off the corrosion that lead acid causes that he will not have that problem again, but he's going to start with some really very nice clean uh, cable connections. All right. Uh, he's got his battery tied up right now. And uh, like a lot of you guys know, these M8 terminal bolts on these batteries, they don't have a lot of uh, room for stacking up a lot of leads on the ends. So we've stacked up what we can, which is mostly his, uh, was only his inverter. And wanted to tie in some uh, other loads off of there, but he's going to have to install some bus bars like we have to on these. So uh, these just don't have the, the ability to stack uh, too many leads on there. And the battery uh, cables and the inverter cables are enough for these M8 terminals. So he's gonna, at some point, put like a bus bar up in here so he can, you know, not have to stack anything up too deep right here. But it looks good. The queen is in place. We're just about ready to fire it up. So I'm gonna go walking way out there when he turns it on. No, <laughs> just kidding. But uh, 
it, it all looks good. It went together in just moments. Uh, we just had to work with the space that we had available for here and the cables that are in place right now. But, you know, this is his first uh, venture, like I said, into lithium. So uh, like all of us do, he'll be, you know, messing around with it and making it tighter as we go or as he goes. But he's going to love this. And we're just moments away from firing it up. And we'll take a peek at it and see how it goes. So there wasn't too many things I had to bleep out of there. So the last thing that uh, he's going to have to do is on this uh, Victron charge controller, he has it set up for uh, the previous lead acid battery. And now that uh, he's running the lithium, we're going to open up that app and tell the charge controller that we are now charging lithium iron phosphate and we want to use those uh, parameters that it has. So uh, as soon as we get that uh, told what to do, we're ready to, we're ready to go right on. So before we uh, go into the app and tell it to run on lithium iron phosphate, we need power to this. So we're going to have to flip the battery on and then we will have power to the charge controller and then we can go in there real quick and turn it on. I'm not going to show you what that looks like. Okay, so now he's going to flip on the power to the battery. And there we go. We can see the light energizing and powering up the charge controller. That blue light should be flashing now. It is. So now we know we have power to the, the charge controller. No solar coming in. And now we will go into the Victron app and set it to be charging lithium iron phosphate. Okay, it took me a minute on uh, his device to figure out there we are in the battery presets. We scrolled all the way to the bottom for the smart lithium, lithium iron phosphate. We're going to tap that and then we're going to just press OK. And then you can see right away absorption voltage 14.2, float voltage. And by the way, it'll hold that absorption voltage for two hours. And of course, you can come in here and, and adjust this any way you want, but we want to go ahead and just set it on the preset for lithium iron phosphate, 14.2 volts for a couple of hours, then it'll turn the power off and float it at 13.5, or it, what it basically means is it won't let any power in until it dips below 13.5. So we know that we're not really floating the lithium, but we're going to let it go down to 13.5 and then once it does that it'll uh, let power in enough just to hold it at 13.5 and then uh, tomorrow it starts a new charging day so we're in good shape there the last thing we need to do now is just turn on the solar panels and run this baby up okay he's back there at the combiner box and the last thing we need to do now to get this going is turn on those solar panels so go ahead flip the switch and we'll show them in real time what happens here. <laughs> here we go. There we go. So the panels are on and you can see right away it went down to zero and the voltage is we got 42.99 volts coming in, no current at the moment. There we go. Okay, so it just took it a moment to kind of run through some stuff. And there we go. He's got 300, and as you can see, it's fluctuating. He lives in the same kind of an area that, that I do, so we get just tons and tons of uh, clouds moving through, and it makes everything... Um, dance around quite a bit. You can see the battery voltage now up to 14.2. So just the very second we turn those panels on, this baby's going right into absorption and now he's good to go. His battery's up and running uh, and he's over paneled to the point where he can uh, use this all night long, no problem. The minute those uh, panels touch the sun in the morning, he's going to go right back up to full charge. So everything looking just absolutely fine. Very, very good. And you can see right now it's only taking 128 watts or so to hold it right there at that absorption level. But like I said, we started with a full battery. 
So otherwise, uh, the panels would have really opened up a lot more. Looking real, real good. Okay, just a few moments later, and you can see now it's only allowing in 16, 15, 16 watts to hold it at 14.2. But he needs to run some load, so he's going to flip his inverter on right now. And I'll show you what that does. It'll just open up whatever watts that his inverter... See, there it goes. Now it's still holding it at 14.2 letting in 50, 60, 70, and the watts keep going up for whatever loads he's running at the back here. So, and that's the beauty also of the amount of panels that he's running is that he has so much power coming in that he can hold it in absorption mode running any load that he's got to do. So there he goes. He's not running a huge load, but now his, his inverter over here is on you can see it's on and he's he's running some smaller loads so yeah he's gonna love this power queen and there we go that was the installation well he's having some fun now he's in there uh, in the back turning in on all kinds of stuff and as you can see it's just not it's just not moving off of the the absorption mode and it just keeps opening up those panels. Really a nice system. Really nice. A minute ago he had it up there and it was pulling about 400 watts. Whatever he was turning on. He's running around flipping off every, flipping on everything just to see like, wow, it's a game changer for him compared to that uh, lead acid battery, which uh, that's what we, he was running and started with. And it was time to move on up. He's going to love the Power Queen, as a lot, of you, a lot of you guys know. I have this same battery. I've reviewed it. Uh, we love it, and he's going to love it, too. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it didn't take us very long. Uh, he did most of the work, and uh, happy to share this with you. I want to thank my friend for inviting us over uh, to do this video. Hope it gives you guys some ideas of different ways uh, that we make all of this work out here. He, he like myself, is 100% off-grid. So now he's just bumped up uh, what he can do out here considerably. So now I have to think about the hike home. It's quite a hike out of here. Very, very rural area. And it's very hot. So I might have some lemonade before I start the journey. Ah, all right, you guys. That was kind of fun. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Had a great time over there. Always fun to see somebody else's system and uh, how they're living off-grid out here. It's a hot day. I'm going to go home, just make sure I got my all my uh, supplies for a big storm coming. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Looks like we're in for at least quite a rain event, but... Yeah, beautiful day right now. It's hard to imagine that out there somewhere is a huge, huge monster. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, everybody. Aloha. Catch you later.